Hello guys, welcome back to our channel, Mystery Recaps. Today, I will demonstrate the 2010 horror film Devil. There are spoilers ahead. Watch out and be cautious. A man is observed cleaning the interior of a building when a body falls onto the truck, parked outside. Two men are talking at a dinner. They discuss alcoholism and the significance of forgiveness for recovering alcoholics, such as the gentleman in the suit. After what happened to his family five years ago, he finds forgiveness difficult and wishes they could talk about normal things instead. Later, as the same man crosses a police line, he is revealed to be a detective. A second officer takes him to the crime scene and reveals the dented truck with the body on top. He inspects the truck's exterior and looks up at the buildings that surround it. The other detective cannot believe a jump with such force could occur from such a small building. The first detective observes that there is no broken glass surrounding the truck and concludes that it rolled to its current location. Two detectives walk around a corner in search of a structure that better matches their crime scene. Next to a skyscraper with a contemporary appearance, the characters are introduced one by one. First, a man wearing a hoodie is loitering. The man with the red tie then passed him and entered the building. The security guard then answers the phone at the front desk and the elderly woman is seen standing in the lobby, confused. Then there is the young lady who entered the lobby, passed the security guard at the reception, was stopped by him and was directed to the end of the line to sign the visitor's log. The security guard informs the other man in the reception area that he must deliver a package to the 39th floor before proceeding to the elevators. The gentleman with the red tie and the elderly lady wish to enter a lift because it is full. They take the other one that has just arrived behind them empty. They enter and the security guard enters with them. As the door begins to close, someone calls out to wait and the previous young woman enters. Following her, another individual yells and grabs the doors. After no one assists them, once everyone is inside, the elevator begins to move, but abruptly stops and jams. In the main security room, an older security guard is observing a hockey game. When a younger security guard enters the room, they discuss the game. One of the elevators is in inspection mode, he observes. Therefore, the older security guard contacts the building engineer while the engineer is attempting to repair a broken window on a high floor. The guard instructs the engineer to inspect the elevator first because people are trapped inside. Returning to the elevator, the security guard becomes anxious. The elderly woman continues to question him about emergency procedures, but he is a temp and does not know. The man in the red tie presses the emergency button and asks the elderly woman why he does not have a walkie-talkie. The older security guard is the one speaking to them over calm and asking them to speak into the camera, which leads them to conclude that the microphone is malfunctioning and he cannot hear them. The elevator security guard attempts to call the lobby on his cell phone, but there is no signal. Therefore, she hands him her phone. The call is brief and rapidly loses signal. The elevator begins to play music and the man with the red tie begins to sing. I'm warning everyone inside the building. Engineer is on his way to the machine room at the top where the wind sweeps off his hat and he almost falls off the side. Back down at the foot of the building. The two detectives are approaching and talking. The detective from the diner finds glass on the pavement and they see a man nearby sweeping more glass. He tells the man to stop doing that and declares the place a crime scene. A huge chunk of glass falling from the building, almost killing his partner, confirms the suspicion. Back inside the building, the engineer is seen checking the elevator from the shaft. He calls the main security room to tell them that it looks fine, but they will reset it back at the elevator. The older security guard tells the group over calm that the light will be out for about 20 seconds. The lights go out and when they come back on, the old lady screams at the security guard to get away from her. The elevator's lights flicker once more before going out completely. As the elevator's lights turn on and off, the young woman is lying on the ground when the light turns back on. The guards in the main office inquire what's happening. When the younger one observes that the young woman's back is injured, panic ensues inside. Red Time Man realizes he is covered in blood and attempts to conceal it from the others. Therefore, the third man inquires if anyone had a sharp object that could have injured her. The security guard in the elevator then notices the blood on the man with the red tie as he attempts to explain that she has just fallen on him. 
The security guard searches him for weapons, since there has now been an assault in the elevator outside the building. The guards in the security room decide to call the police. The younger guard discovers the footage from the moment he noticed something peculiar on the screen and shows it to the older guard, who dismisses it as mere grain, the younger one captures. His cross convinced that he had witnessed something evil, but the older one attempts to calm him down in the elevator. The security guard and the third man attempt to force the doors open. Even if they were able, they are unaware. If there is a hole in the shaft, they could ascend to it. The elderly woman is afraid that the elevator will fall due to its precarious position. The man with the red tie attempts to assist with the doors, but he is relegated to the rear of the lift, away from the others so as to keep an eye on him, believing that he may have harmed the young woman. In the interim, the two detectives arrive at the main security office where the older guard explains the assault and demonstrates the security camera. He informs them that others in the elevator believe the man with the red tie was responsible. After assessing the situation, the detective takes action. He instructs the security guards to contact the elevator company and instructs his partner to contact the fire department. He then inquires about the inhabitants, especially curious about the security guard. After learning that he is a temporary employee, he instructs the guards in the main office to retrieve his files. The younger guard describes what he observed in the footage, but the older guard dismisses it once more. The detective then instructs those in the elevator to display their ideas to the camera so he can identify them. Unfortunately, the writing on the IDs is illegible, so the detectives and older security guard check the visitor's log in the lobby. When the elevator's lights flicker again, the younger guard in the main security office is monitoring the elevator's security camera. Inside the elevator, the young woman witnesses the sudden transformation of everyone into bloodied corpses on the floor. Everyone is in their proper position. The lights go out again entirely. The lift's mirror shatters and strange noises are once again heard in the darkness. When the light returns, it is revealed that the man with the red tie was stabbed in the neck with a piece of mirror glass. In the meantime, the younger guard calls back the two detectives. They observe the man's demise. The detective therefore calls for backup. When he begins reviewing the footage, the younger guard begins relating a story to everyone. When the devil is nearby, he says, situations like these always begin with a suicide and injuries. Occasionally, he assumes human form and torments people. He concludes by speculating that one of the people in the elevator may be the devil. The detectives are uninterested in the guard's words continue reviewing the surveillance footage with the suspicion that the lift security guard may have been involved in the murder. Partner states his records indicate that he is a violent criminal. The group in the elevator is also discussing the possible identity of the murderer. The fire department enters the structure through the main security office. The detective informs those in the elevator that the area is now a crime scene. The detective doubts that the incident was an accident but the individuals do not appear to be murderers. He generates an idea and solicits a volunteer. He then instructs the man to remove a piece of paper from the pocket of the deceased. The man raises a letter to the camera, which the office staff deciphers to determine that the deceased man was scheduled to meet someone in the building. The detectives go first to meet with the fire department, and then the detective from the diner goes to the floor with a broken window. The forensics team informs him that the suicide note left by the jumper contains very strange words. The devil's footsteps are approaching, written last. Firefighters attempt to pry open the elevator's doors from the exterior, but to no avail. Inside, one of the men is attempting to exit through the lift's roof. However, the security guard pulls him back down, believing he is attempting to flee. The detective is speaking with a building resident who was supposed to meet a deceased man in the lift. He discovers that the individual was a con artist and requests a list of the victims. Back in the elevator, individuals begin to examine one another. In the meantime, the detective returns to the main security office and informs his partner that one of the individuals probably did not sign in if they intended to murder the man with the red tie. They would not be so foolish as to do so. He then hands them the second list and instructs them to compare the two. Then he approaches the security guards and the footage reveals the young guard's face. However, 
The detective then shows him the apology note written by the person who caused the car accident that killed his wife and child. While they are conversing, he asserts that people can be evil without the help of the devil. When reviewing the footage, the old guard discovers the moment when the young woman believes she is being grabbed. The footage does not depict anyone carrying out the action. The detective suspects she is lying and develops his own suspicions about her. They observe the people in the elevator, groping each other and instruct them to stop. Once more, an argument ensues and the elderly woman threatens to pepper spray the security guard. He seizes the spray from her grasp. In the main office of security, the senior guard is calling the engineer to tell him to stop vanishing. The lift engineer is descending the lift cable and can't get his walkie-talkie to answer. He descends the cable in a chain made from his protective equipment. There are tears in the lift. The security guard is taunting the elderly woman with pepper spray that has expired. The old guard's voice can be heard from the top of the lift when something heavy falls from above. Instantaneously, blood begins to pour in from the top panel. They can still hear the walkie, talkie and determine that the fallen engineer is the engineer. The detective visits the roof to inspect the shaft and observes the elevator engineer. Atop the elevator, most likely dead, informs everyone that the elevator occupants can hear the walkie. Through the wall, he orders the fire department to enter the elevator. The firefighters begin to dig through the wall and examine the surveillance footage in the main office. They observe that the elderly woman stole wallets. The detective remarks that they were all bad people while he is observing the screen. Again, the security camera footage is corrupted, revealing that everyone inside is dead. However, only the officer can see that next. They find footage of the third man and observe that he was carrying a satchel when he entered the lobby, but did not have it with him in the elevator. The elevator's lights begin to flicker and then go out. The security guard strikes a match and there is an odd object next to him. When the lights return, the elderly woman is found strung up and dead on one side of the lift. The detective sees this on the screen and orders the building to be locked down with everyone inside evacuating to the lobby. In the meantime, the detectives discover the bag in a restroom near the lobby. The detectives suspect the contents of the bag could be used to rig a lift. The younger guard is left alone in the main office, so he begins reciting prayers over the car. The people in the elevator disapprove of his actions. They speak briefly but quickly. A fight ensues between the two men. The young woman demands that the security guard murder the other man. While the guard is still praying in the main office, the detectives enter and observe the situation in the elevator. They command the individuals to step back and place their hands on the walls as the lift passengers settle down. The officer asks the guard how his story concludes. He informs him that they all perish. His partner then informs him that the young woman also has a criminal record, that she was married to a wealthy man and was in the building to see an attorney. They run into the lobby and locate the attorney. The only information he can divulge is that they should investigate her closest associates and that forensic accounting is his area of expertise. The detective requests to speak with the woman's husband. In the meantime, the former security guard shuts off the water in the basement. The firefighters continue to break through the wall while still in the basement after he informs them. He discovers a wire submerged in water and attempts to extract it. Moments later, as he collapses in the lobby, the gathered crowd begins to scream. Detectives rush to his aid, but he passes away in the elevator. The remaining three individuals begin to argue again. The two detectives report back to the office that the husband of the younger woman, who owns the building's security company, may have orchestrated the crime. In the elevator, the lights go out once more. The detective instructs them to use the screens of their phones as flashlights, but their phones are ripped from their hands. The lights go out, and when they come back on, the security guard has been killed. In a panic, the two remaining individuals grab a piece of glass and prepare to defend themselves. The detective desperately asks the younger guard how he can assist them. He advises him to accept responsibility for who they are. The detective then tells them a personal story about this and requests that they put down their glasses. They reluctantly comply. The lights suddenly go out and then come back on. As the young woman lies on the ground with glass in her throat, the man is seen attempting to assist her. 
The body of the elderly woman rises behind him, indicating that it is now his turn. The man recalls himself driving a car in a flashback while reaching for a beer. He collides with another vehicle. He exits his vehicle and sees the other vehicle in a ditch. Before passing away, a woman pinned beneath a car points to her child lying in the grass in front of the vehicle. The man, unable to comprehend what he has done, flees the scene, leaving a note on the window of the other elevator car. He apologizes repeatedly and begs the old woman for the devil to take him instead of the young woman. The devil rejects the deal and when the elevator stops, throws it down the shaft. The man discovers the engineer's radio and begins to speak. He informs the detective of his actions. The detective and the young guard are attentive and comprehend what this means. The young woman dies in his arms inside the elevator and the devil is enraged, stating that she truly desired him. The lights turn off and then back on as the firefighters open the elevator's doors. The man is the sole survivor, having been speared by the devil. The elderly woman had vanished. Later, as paramedics remove the bodies, the detective observes the man seated in the lobby. Next, he will take him to the train station, he says. They are observed riding in a car. The man is seated in the rear of the vehicle. The detective informs him that he murdered his family on that fateful day, but that he now forgives him. Be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you can view similar videos. Thank you for viewing.